Alright, you're about to hear it now. How's it going everyone? Fiber Optic Broadbean here, and it has been a while. But yep, today I'm finally back and we're playing Banjo-Kazooie. But before we get into this let's play, I'd like to address the elephant in the room. Yep, back in E3, Banjo and Kazooie were revealed for Smash, and as you can probably imagine, I was over the moon at their reveal while I don't have my reaction recorded in any way. It was still pretty amazing for me to see them get into the game. If you guys watched my top 10 hopes for Smash Bros Ultimate, you'd know that they're number one, they were my number one hope, and it's pretty incredible to see that, see that happen, just to see your favourite characters, the ones you've wanted for such a long time, get into the game. But anyway, enough of that. Uh, that's not what you're here for. We're going to be playing some Banjo-Kazooie. So as you can see, this game clearly has a lot of personality. You can even tell that from the file select screen, you've got this this file where Banjo's asleep, you've got Banjo cooking, and then you've got this hardcore gamer Banjo with his Game Boy. But yeah, let's just select file 1 and get right into it. Here we go. Alright guys, I'm terrible with voices, so I apologise in advance. I am not going to be able to do very different voices for the different characters. Why it's Grunty any day? She really takes my breath away. Cough. So this is this cauldron here. Yes, you're right, I'm rather proud. My looks stand me out from the crowd. See, this is Gruntilda, the main antagonist of the game. Always speaks in rhymes for whatever reason. Uh, but there is this girl, says the cauldron. What do you mean? This cannot be. There's no one prettier than me. Why, it's Tootie, young and small. She's the prettiest of girl of them all. Oh man, I've messed it up already. I, I can't read for some reason. Nicer beauty can't be had. Unfortunately, I think you'll find it's Tootie. She's cute and kind. Alright. And now Gruntilda, with her broomstick, is heading out. And speaking of Tootie, here she is. This is Banjo's sister. Running towards his house. And you'll notice the molehill here, and this is Bottles. Bottles the mole. He'll be helping us along this quest. Hi there Tootie, what are you going to do today? <laughs> this text scrolling. When my big lazy brother wakes up, I don't even know what this was. We're gonna go on an adventure. <laughs> and here we go, here's Banjo, the man himself. He's asleep. Oh dear. Wake up! I wanna go on an adventure too, says Kazooie. I know Kazooie, Tuti, and Gruntilda are girls, but yeah, my voice is stuck within a certain range that it cannot exceed, so as I said, I apologise for that. <laughs> There's not going to be a lot of variety in these voices. Is that your brother? Where, Mr. Mole? I can't see him. Up there, in the sky. I mean, that doesn't quite look like a bear to me, but um, you know, Bottles' as eyesight might not be the best. You'll soon be ugly, what a pity! Oh dear, that doesn't sound good. Let me go, you ugly old hag! Don't scratch and bite, my little bear! You'll soon need bigger under- oh dear, what's going on here? Oh no, she's got a somebody. Help, says Bottles. 
Banjo, wake up, man. Of course, Banjo is still asleep. Oh dear. In a deep slumber. Yawn. <laughs> I just said the word yawn. I mean, I don't think that's how it's intended to be read. Let's get outside. There's trouble. And here we go. We're about to get into it. So this is Banjo-Kazooie, the game. So we're about to head on out and see what's happened with Tootie. So here's Bottles once again. Listen up, I'm Bottles, the short-sighted moles. There you go, short-sighted. That's why you thought Gruntilda's a Banjo. I'm Banjo and here's my buddy Kazooie. Sure is a strange looking buddy, Banjo. Can it talk? Better than you can, Goggle Boy. <laughs> What's all that noise about? And where's my sister, Tooty? Ugly witch Gruntilda swooped down out of the sky and grabbed her, which uh, did happen. Calm down, Geeky, we'll get her back. Where did she go? She flew up to her mountain lair, so that is Gruntilda's lair. That will be the main hub world of this game and where we'll spend a large proportion of our time. And he's gonna ask us if we want to learn the basic moves, but I've played this game many a time and um, I know how to play, so you bet we're good enough, Bottle Brain. Oh dear, Kazooie's being ruthless here. So we'll meet him at the top of Spiral Mountain. But yeah, Banjo Kazooie is a standard 3D platformer. Uh, those were common back in the 64 era, but what Banjo Kazooie, it was really special and it's really stood out amongst the uh, amongst the competition. It took what Mario 64 did, like Mario 64 was the main, the first big 3D platformer there was, and Banjo-Kazooie took the formula that Mario 64 had and perfected it really. And it's honestly a spectacular game for the time. But yeah, we're gonna wander around uh, Gruntilda's oh. lair, as you see I just killed was it a cauliflower? I wasn't paying attention, but uh, it dropped a honeycomb. That's the health unit for this game. So when you take damage, um, you lose your honeycombs. But you can collect those honeycombs to recover the health. But this right here is an empty honeycomb. And that little jingle sounds familiar, doesn't it? But if you collect six of those extra honeycombs, those empty ones, uh, then it will add an extra slot to your health bar. So we're going to be searching for five more of those in this episode around Spiral Mountain. So here we have a waterfall, which is very nice, and we have some platforms leading up to it. So I'm going to jump across once again. As you can see, when you try your best, but you don't succeed. As I say, uh, falling into the water, uh, Kazooie helps because um, she essentially acts as a double jump. Uh, the team behind this railware, they wanted a way to incorporate a double jump that worked naturally like, and didn't look out of place. When you try your best, but they originally had Kazooie as just a pair of wings in Banjo's backpack, and I'm for whatever reason completely incompetent as soon as I hit the record button. But yeah, they originally had Kazooie just as wings in Banjo's backpack, but then eventually they just fleshed out her character and she became her own her own sort of entity alongside Banjo and they became the duo we know and love. Oh, come on, there we go. And you'll see behind the waterfall that there's a little statue there. And that is an extra life, as you can see the counter just went up there. But yeah, we just need four more of those empty honeycomb pieces uh, in order to extend our life meter. We've got some cauliflower here. We'll just uh, kill the cauliflower. Don't want any of that here. I don't know why the, the vegetables and stuff are evil here. I mean, they're not really evil, they're just wandering about. But yeah, we can climb the trees as you can see. Now this attack that I'm going to do now is called the Beak Buster, I believe. You'll probably recognise that if you saw the Smash trailer or if you've played the game before, obviously. But yeah, it can be used to smash rocks and other objects. And it's one of the most powerful attacks that Duo has initially. And there you go, that's another extra honeycomb piece for us, an empty honeycomb piece I should say. And up here, we'll find another cauliflower. And if we kill this cauliflower, there's another extra honeycomb piece. So as you can see, we have nearly completed uh, a whole extra honeycomb. Um, one of the trees has something up it. I have forgotten which one exactly though. 
So bear with me while I remember. I think it's this one. So the... Yeah, okay, it's this one. See, there's the extra honeycomb. And when I collect the last one, uh, we will get our uh, extended life meter. Alrighty, guys. Very shortly, you're gonna hear it. Alright. You're about to hear it now. Yep. <laughs> That's the same jingle I used for my intro, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, pretty neat fact for you guys there, if you didn't know that already, but yeah, my intro is the sound that plays when you complete an extra honeycomb for your life meter. But anyways, uh, as we said before, we're going to meet bottles up here at Spiral Mountain, well, at the top of Spiral Mountain. This, what we're climbing up, is Spiral Mountain. It's a mountain shaped like a spiral, which... Uh, is to be expected considering its name, so let's see. Bottles should just be chilling up here in his molehill, there's a lot of those around here. So how you doing, Bottles? So you're ready to tackle the witch now? We sure are, show us the way, Bottle Boy. Cross the bridge to enter Gruntilda's lair. Look out for me inside. Good luck, says Bottles. And I appreciate that um, good luck wish you gave us there, Bottles. I am sure it will come in handy. But yeah, Bottles, he's a very helpful guy. Got another cutscene here, we've got Gruntilda and Tutti in some sort of machine that looks way too big for Tutti and uh, way too small for Grunty. This fine contraption, so I'm told, will make me young and Tutti old. Let me go, you fat hag, my brother will come and kick your butt, says Tutti. Rescue he will not dare, there's many dangers in my lair. Hurry, Klungo, push that switch. I'm tired of being an ugly witch. Yes, Mistress Grunty, power is on, soon to be ready. Banjo, help, says Tootie. Oh dear. But yeah, Banjo-Kazooie, what really set it apart from other 3D platformers was not only the visuals, as you can see, which was pretty spectacular for the time, but also just the charm it had. And the music was composed by Grant Kirkhope, who did a phen phenomenal job on this soundtrack. But as you can see right here, if I um, look with the C up, we have a golden jigsaw piece. And that is the main collectible of this game. Sort of like a Power Stars from a Mario game. So these jigsaw pieces can be used uh, to open new worlds, which we're going to see very shortly. And by very shortly, I mean very very shortly so as you can see here we have this suspicious looking mountain with a very suspiciously placed door here we can't break it open this is the first world mumbo's mountain says bottles to open the door you'll need to find the jigsaw puzzle i mean picture with an image of this area on it have a look around yeah i wonder where it is um i'm really not sure where could it be but yeah so we stand on here I'm not sure what Bottles was going to say, he just said you've. Uh, you've what? But yeah, you you got to fill in the missing pieces on, uh, on the puzzle. So we got the first piece just then from that small little platforming challenge that we just encountered. So now if we put the piece into the place, we'll hear a jingle and that's it. The picture's complete and the door to Mumbo's mountain is open. That was such an easy fit. The others may just test your wit. So here we go, we're gonna enter Mumbo's Mountain. The first world of this game, the first main world I should say. Alright, so. There are three new moves to learn in this world. Find my molehills, and I'll explain. So we've got some enemies here. They only take one hit and they go down, so pretty simple to take care of them. As you can see along this bridge are some musical notes, there are 100 of these in each world and collecting them will allow you to access certain places in Gruntilda's lair and what I just picked up was a Jinjo. Uh, there are five of these in each world and when you collect all five you get a Jiggy. And there are 10 Jiggies in each world. Jiggies are jigsaw pieces by the way, that's the shorthand term used to refer to them here. Not sure if uh, any characters have already used that or if I've already said that, but just thought I'd put that out there. 
Okay, so, got some enemies here. This is a beehive. These guys are pretty common, and when you attack them, they drop three honeycombs, which is fairly generous. Uh, climbing up here, we have some more notes to collect, and um, as you can see, <laughs> my joystick isn't the best, so um, yeah, my control is a little bit janky at times. So, we've got some termites looking, looking things here, but not going to do anything with those just yet. We're going to climb up here instead. Ah, uh, that rolling doesn't save time. But, as you can see, there's just a jiggy, a jigsaw piece roll, uh, lying around here. First one we're going to get in the world, here we go. You must search for ten of us in each world, we'll help you progress through the witch's lair. And there you go, that's our second jiggy in the game, yep. When you're ready to leave this world, return to the start area and stand on the exit pad. But for those of you who are pretty eagle-eyed, you'll notice that there's a Bottles molehill here, so if we talk to him... This talent trot will let Kazooie tackle steep slopes with ease. That sounds useful. How does she do it? Hold Z, then press the left C button. Continue to hold Z while moving Kazooie around with the control stick. Go practice. So this is essentially your fast travel in this game. Not really like a warp or anything, but it's just the way you move around quickly. It's a lot faster than just Banjo walking alone. And as Bottles explained, it allows you to go up steep slopes like this one. So that's always handy. There's going to be a lot of steep slopes in this game. And you guys might have just spotted that in the corner of the screen there. So if I go back here and turn around, you'll see this weird skull looking thing. If I pick it up, <laughs> you'll hear this ikum bokum sounding sound effect. Um, so that's a mumbo token. It's used for uh, magic from a shaman named Mumbo, coincidentally. Well, not coincidentally, <laughs> expectedly I should say. And I just picked up five eggs there. And Kazooie can learn to use those eggs as ammo, so that's always handy. Some nice notes to pick up here. And there's a lot of them on this slope. There's also a yellow ginger for those of you guys who saw it. So if I pick that up now, that's three out of five gingos in this world. Yippee! You've collected enough notes to break this first note door. So yeah, there's note doors in Gruntilda's lair which block you from progressing to certain areas when... So that, that's essentially the method they use to ensure that you explore all the worlds properly before moving on to the next ones. I mean, you don't necessarily need to do the worlds in order, but uh, this game is generally fairly linear in its approach. It's sequel Banjo-Tooie, which I'm just going to say now I slightly prefer to Banjo-Kazooie, is more non-linear than, uh, than the original game. Got some more notes here to pick up. And I've got another Bottles Molehill, as you can see. So if we talk to him this time, what's he gonna say? I call this the Bait Buster. Jump into the air, then press Z to send Kazooie slamming into the floor. Ooh, I don't like the sound of that, Banjo. Get used to it, Nest Girl. You'll be using it a lot. Oh, Bottles finally trying to fight back after Kazooie's been throwing insults at him. So if we ground pound this, or... Uh, it'll pop out some notes, so we'll pick those up. Always appreciate it. We've got 72 out of the 100 in this world now. Got some eggs. We can't quite use them as ammo just yet. We'll need another move to do that. Which bottles will be able to teach us. And for Grandpa on this, we've got an enemy in there. <laughs> that one's a bit of a trick one. And there's a green ginger in this one. So just the pink one left in the world. When you try. I completely missed that. Extra life in this one. And in the final one. We got a jiggy. When you try. <laughs> wow, that enemy. I'm gonna kill him for that. When you oh come on. I can't even kill the enemy. <laughs> but yeah, this suspicious looking skull here is probably something we'll look towards next episode, so I'll just grab the Jiggy in its eye first. Uh, if I can actually 
successfully do it. Uh, I'm just suddenly turning incompetent, but that happens when you click record. As you can see, we've got a, another steep slope here. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought it was just going to free fall there, and there wasn't going to be a slope. But yeah, memory has served me well in this case. But we have another Jiggy here, just lying around on this slope. So that's our fourth Jiggy in the world, and our fifth Jiggy overall. That's 81 notes, 84, and as you can see, we've got a Mumbo token and a Pink Jinjo, so... I'm gonna pick that up. Oh, I completely just messed that up. Right. So here is the Mumbo token. Oh, oh come on, mate. Really? These guys... They're just messing me up today. Ikom bokum. But yeah, if we backflip... There's the final Jinjo of the world, and here's a Jiggy. So there we go. We got a Jiggy. But on that note guys, I'm gonna end off the episode. So thank you very much for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Next time, we'll be exploring more of Mumbo's Mountain, so I'll see you guys then. Peace.